Hey everyone, Xeon over here from Nintendo Life. In the opening hour of The Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom, Link dives headfirst, straight off a massive cliff, with no real view of what's actually waiting for him below. He doesn't use a parachute, he doesn't have his hang glider, he just has a lot of courage and trust. And it's an incredibly powerful shot that gave me goosebumps the first time I witnessed it, and in a way, this reminds me of the trust fall that we all took when picking this game up in its first week. We didn't know much about Tears of the Kingdom before launch, but in hindsight, we're happy with the leap of faith Nintendo let a lot of us take with this new Zelda adventure. And a major feather in the cap of Tears of the Kingdom is that same diving mechanic. The game gives you multiple opportunities at the start to leap off ledges, gracefully gliding into ponds of water that are resting below. But after you leave the Great Sky Island, you may have been surprised to realize that diving seems to be a bit trickier to pull off than you thought. Now you could dive into ponds of water in Breath of the Wild, but there weren't as many instances where you'd actually use it when compared to Tears of the Kingdom. So when trying to pull off a dive, does it ever feel like Link just randomly does whatever he wants? Do you wonder if there's a way to control him? Why won't he just do the thing? Don't worry though, you're not alone. Today, we're going to teach you everything you need to know about diving in The Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom. Some of you may have already figured this out. Maybe you've gotten the hang of it. But regardless, it's good to use the buddy system, and we might still teach you something. You may remember that on the Great Sky Island, there were these green Zonai circles embedded at the edge of certain cliffs. When standing on one of them, the game gives you the prompt jump, but with the A button, and not the normal jump button, which is Y. In the beginning of the game, this gave me the idea that if I stood on the edge of any cliff and pressed A, I'd be able to dive off gracefully, but it turns out this only works when standing on those green crests. Pressing A normally on a cliff's edge will just make Link drop down and climb. When you want to perform a dive, you can either walk, run, or sprint towards a ledge and jump with the Y button right before you hit the edge. If you time it properly, Link will pull off a dive that'll make an Olympic athlete pleased, no matter the height of the jump. However, it seems like Link can be a little picky about when and where he wants to pull this off. In our testing, it seems like it's a surefire win to work when leaping off a ledge into water or off a sky island, but sometimes it'll still work even if you have a pit of dirt or rubble below you. So we tried diving a ton in different situations with different conditions, and we think we figured it out. We imagine a lot of this comes down to simply just pushing the Y button too early or too late. But we also think the surface that you're running on and the edge of the cliff might have something to do with it as well. Here's a shot of us diving off a flat platform on a bridge into a body of water. We were able to do this one over and over again. But then here's a shot of us on a building with a 90 degree angle straight down. There are no extra rocks hanging out that could potentially cause the game to not know where it's going below or if it's able to dive. It's a flat spot. And we tried diving in this area probably 20 times and only managed to get one dive. But for a bit there, we thought it just wasn't possible. So we were happy to see it work at least that one time. We're thinking there must be some list of parameters that have to be met in order for Link to actually pull off a dive and probably being next to a body of water and being on a flat edge are part of it. Now we understand that really isn't necessarily advice, but it is data that you can use to maybe not beat yourself up so bad about not being able to dive every single time. But even if you do jump off a platform awkwardly and miss that dive, you can still use the R button to throw yourself into a dive in mid-air. If you let go of the R button, you'll switch to a flying squirrel freefall, which will help slow you down a little bit, and you can then still pull out your paraglider if you have enough stamina. I didn't realize this, the fact that you could push the R button, until maybe 10 hours into my playthrough. And it's honestly really fun to switch back and forth between diving and paragliding, and it can give you a lot more control of your situation. Now if you really want to skydive like a pro, like a master, rumor has it there's a special set of gear out there that can enhance your diving abilities. But that's just what people are saying around the Nintendo Life office. Diving may seem like a really simple thing to get to grips with, but it's surprising the game doesn't really explain this to you and sort of teaches you a different method to dive at the start of the game. So do let us know in the comments down below how long it took you to get the hang of this. And if this video gave you some worthy advice, let us know. We'd love to hear it. We're sure plenty of you already figured this out by now, but the fact that I didn't figure this out until quite late in the game made me think maybe I wasn't alone. 
And don't forget, if you enjoyed this video and want to see our videos pop up in your subscription feed, then why don't you free fall through that subscribe button like it's a big hoop in a generic skydiving minigame, and then ring that notification bell on your way down too. Thank you all so much for watching. I'm Zian from Nintendo Life. Stay safe out there, and we will see you all next time.